Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Ian Leslie, and I'm with Seller Active. Thank you for joining us today. We're really excited to host this webinar for you. As you've seen from the details, uh, we're going to be focusing on how you can effectively and efficiently scale your multi-channel e-commerce operation. Uh, I'm happy to be joined by iMedia Incorporated as well as Big Commerce. iMedia is out of New Jersey, Big Commerce is out of Austin. And we're uh, pleased to be able to highlight a customer that we've all three worked with, Hisense USA, which is one of the largest TV manufacturers in the world. If you watched the World Cup, you would have seen them plastered all over everything. Uh, without further ado, we'd like to jump into it, start with some introductions, uh, have iMedia kick it off, and we'll jump right in. Okay. All right, thanks everybody. So this is Brian McGovern. I'm a partner with iMedia. Uh, uh, we're happy to join you today. Thanks for joining. And this is Jason Hork with Big Commerce. Uh, we are a SaaS-based e-commerce platform uh, based out of Austin, Texas, and uh, looking forward to the next hour. Thank you. And as I mentioned, my name is Ian Leslie. I'm a senior sales consultant with Seller Active. We are out of Portland, Oregon, and we're a channel management solution that plugs in and works with all major marketplaces alongside Big Commerce and iMedia, who are both partners of ours. All right. All right. So, uh, just moving on, just a little bit more about iMedia. Um, we are a full service strategic digital, digital agency uh, with a primary location in Jersey. Uh, we also have a location in Texas and one in Florida. We're about 40 employees. We focus on content management, uh, e-commerce, and, uh, and systems integration, along with marketing to round out the full service capability with some clients that you see on the top right, like ADP, Crestron, Carnegie Hall, obviously Hisense, uh, and, and Office Depot. And this is Jason with Big Commerce. Yep, this is Jason with Big Commerce again. Uh, thank you, Brian. BigCommerce is the world's leading platform for e-commerce uh, for established and rapidly growing businesses. Thanks to partners like iMedia and Seller Active, we are constantly pushing the boundaries of what our SaaS-based platform can achieve. Uh, we're quick to market, affordable, and uh, really offer many different industries leading advantages, uh, including uh, total cost of ownership, uh, speed, uh, you're able to, to get to market get materially market. faster with, with our SaaS based option, uh, easily adaptable uh, for quickly changing channels, consumer shopping behaviors, and uh, payment mechanisms. And lastly, our customizability and extensibility is really a unique uh, value prop in the industry. We're a SaaS based platform, uh, but we also have uh, an, an open source. Uh, capability to us uh, through the breadth and speed of our APIs and our curated app ecosystem uh, that is ready to enhance your business. All right, thanks for that. Hey, listen, this is Brian again. Um, we're getting some feedback from the audience that audio is not working. Um, we're able to hear everything fine on our end. Uh, can we just take a second to have anybody in the audience just, uh, you know, do a quick chat to make sure that you can hear us? Uh, I just want to see if there's any greater issue with the, uh, with the viewers. Okay, so we have uh, one, one person just responded that sound is fine for them. So um, for those of you that can't hear, uh, you might want to try to dial into the phone side of things. It might be a computer problem on your end. Um, I, don't, I don't know what else to tell you on that. <laughs> Maybe uh, we can so have Hannah chat going. that out as well. Sure. Okay. And this is Ian again from Seller Active. A little bit more about us. Uh, we are a channel management solution. We integrate, as I mentioned, with all major marketplaces uh, such as Amazon, eBay, Walmart, Jet. Uh, we provide a full service uh, platform that helps with inventory management, listing creation, order management, as well as algorithmic and automated repricing uh, across many of the sales channels that we work with. Seller Active is, uh, you know, not only an affordable platform, but it's a relatively easy one to get set up with. And so one of our advantages is the fact that we can get people integrated with all of these different sales channels out of the box 
or in the case of a company like Hisense, we're extremely customizable as well. And so Brian will go into some of the nuances and technology behind uh, the solution that we set up for them. But essentially, we have an open API that can be utilized to connect to ERP solutions, uh, integrations that we might not have out of the box, and a whole array of things that you can do to customize our platform. So it's flexible, dynamic, and affordable. Uh, and you know we're constantly improving and updating the platform. Great. All right, so I'll, I'll try to just go a little bit slow for the people who are having trouble dialing in. It seems that there's about five or six people who are having a little bit of trouble. Um, it seems to be isolated though. Um, Hisense USA is a division of Hisense uh, Global. Hisense Global is a Chinese owned company. Um, they are the number one uh, TV manufacturer and, and, and from the sales perspective, they hold the number one share spot of TVs that are sold in China. They have, they've held that spot for 14 years. Most people in the US don't know who they are. Um, so as Hisense USA uh, wanted to expand their, their e-commerce reach, their, their sales reach, their global presence, um, they decided to focus hard on the U.S. market. Um, they came to us and they, they said, you know, look, we're trying to expand our presence and we have a few core needs. One, increase sales. Two, is to uh, reduce losses in the way that uh, some SKUs, like, for instance, refurbished SKUs, uh, they were just a loss on their P&L and they wanted a way to kind of just um, create a secondary market for that. So they wanted to sell that direct to consumer. And again, they wanted to scale, right? So those were the needs. Uh, they also had a, a, a somewhat smaller need to address a, uh, a piece of their B2B market. The B2B market uh, is, as you might imagine, like a giant TV manufacturer. Um, they have deals with Lowe's, with Walmart, with, um, you know, with, with most of the big box, like brick and mortar retailers, where they're doing a lot of sales in bulk, right? But then there's also, if you own like a bar, or if, you, if you're a dentist, then you have like the need to have like five, 10 or 15 TVs and you wanna buy in bulk and get a little discount for buying in bulk. They wanted to stand up a site to allow those orders to be taken without humans on the phone. It's cheaper to take those orders um, and it's easier to um, establish like store credit and, and provide better pricing. Uh, so they came to us and they said, hey, look, what is the way to do that? Um, how can we stand up a site, scale the site to the channels um, where, the, where there's a ton of people like Amazon and Walmart, and stitch that solution into our existing logistics framework. Um, and we said big commerce as the sales engine was the right way to go. Uh, the reason that we chose big commerce is because it addressed some of the specific needs um, almost out of the box. Um, and those needs, um, as, you, as we drill down into the requirements, um, they wanted a best in class channel agnostic shopping experience, right? So, that just means that all the, all the necessary features and all the expected features in, in, in basic e-commerce was present out of the box. You know, like um, uh, the ease of configurability of pricing, uh, ease of distribution of SKUs, inventory management, et cetera. Um, they wanted it to be fast, secure, and easy to manage. Uh, fraud detection was particularly important to them because they, they did try to launch a store uh, using just, you know, Hisense resources, and they spun up a store, but they did have a little trouble with some fraud detection, right? Um, they wanted to kind of squash that because um, in the in the high-priced electronics arena, fraud is something that you have to worry about. Um, th there is a probability that if, if somebody, you know, gets a hold of a credit card, um, that they might have a TV shipped to an address that may be abandoned, and you want to kind of make sure that that doesn't happen because there's almost no recourse if that, if that actually does happen. And... Um, when it comes to taxation, they had specific needs. They have a complex tax structure that they have to uh, that they have to adhere to, and they also wanted a solution that handled tax remittance as well. So if you're selling globally and then you start to sell in another country like the USA, you want to make sure that the taxation uh, laws are handled by an inbound, like by a stateside company. Um, and through the partnerships that Big Commerce had uh, had made and offered through their platform via like one-click turnkeys, it made Big Commerce the standout solution. All right, so those are the specific requirements. Solution was really two phases. The first phase was we were gonna stand up the new website and have that be the destination for folks to go to, to participate in the shopping experience. Um, it was one of two phases because the second phase was obviously scale. Going back to the first point, this is, a, this is essentially a new venture in the USA. Hisense did not have a footprint in the USA. This was their first and the first step digitally of having a presence, you're not gonna get a lot of eyeballs. What's gonna happen in the purchase path 
uh, and 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 part of our part of our work in in in, in providing a strategy for this effort for them was to help them understand what the customer was doing. And a customer would go into Walmart, the brick and mortar storefront, and they'd be walking around the TV section. They'd start the purchase pass and say, all right, look, I'm looking for a TV. And they'll see this new brand on the shelf, Hisense. What's Hisense? You know, I've heard of Samsung. I've heard of Sony. I haven't heard of Hisense. And then they might punch it up on their phone or go back home and look it up on their computer. So this is the first destination. It, it served the purpose of providing brand credibility. It matched their existing brand standards. It allowed them to do things uh, through big commerce that are available out of the box, like sorting, searching, comparing, uh, so that you can kind of get to the point of the model number and sort of vet what you saw in, uh, in, in the Walmart store actually had some credibility in the brand, right? And then as far as being able to sell to consumers and dealers, that's just the feature that we, you know, we turned on right out of the box. They're able to offer, through big commerce, they're able to offer uh, gift certificate pricing, um, store credit, uh, so that you can be a dealer, log in, self-identify as a dealer. Once you're vetted through the back end, you can then get access to special pricing. So they're able to offer to dealers individual pricing based on that dealer's relationship with the brand, uh, achieving you know B2B at scale. Uh, obviously, the site was designed for conversion, and it is responsive. Uh, Avalara was the taxation software that we that we integrated to, to big commerce and when I say we integrated it's a one-click uh, integration to big commerce that you just basically turn on the feature um, incidentally two weeks ago Avalara just went public um, so they're you know publicly traded very large uh, uh, well-known company in the US for handling taxation and remittance uh, we integrated FedEx for shipping so all the shipping and tracking is real-time through their FedEx uh, through their FedEx relationship and signified is the fraud detection platform the reason that's important Signified offers a level of detection for fraud above and beyond what you'd get from your normal credit card gateway uh, AVS protection, where that, that in that realm, it really just matches like street versus zip code on the credit card, and it allows you to say whether you are or not going to ship to PO boxes, et cetera. Where Signified comes in, if Signified allows you to go to a different level of, of, of fraud detection, you can set your own threshold uh, on a very number of different uh, criteria. And they also offer a, a chargeback guarantee. The chargeback guarantee is interesting, particularly with Hisense, because they wanted to make sure that they didn't have a new cost center if there was going to be any fraud. They didn't want to be on the hook for the chargeback for the TV. They didn't want to have to you know, pay the credit card company back uh, the fees with, that happens to them when they get charged. So Signified offers a two-phase commit uh, with their detection. One is if it, patches, if it passes the digital uh, triggers, then it's good to go. If it is flagged by the digital triggers, it goes into a, the transaction goes into a state where it has to be reviewed by a human. That process can happen over 24 hours, and the human will end up making a decision whether or not it is a good transaction or not. And any transaction that Signified says is good, if it turns out that it's fraud, they will pay for the transaction. They will eat the chargeback. They'll pay the company for that. So it's a, it's a way to really mitigate against fraud, and it's offered out of the box with big commerce. So these are kind of the reasons that we said, you know, out of the box, big commerce is the way to go. Um, and it, it should also be mentioned that in, 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 the, in the SaaS world, so big commerce is a SaaS provider of, of e-com. Um, that means that you don't have any software, uh, you don't have any hardware costs, you don't have to stand it up in an infrastructure on your own. And also by being in the cloud and by offering 100% customization of the front end uh, through, their, through the way the software works with, with a technology called Stencil, any HTML programmer can style the entire store start to finish, and you can be and you can go to market in about 50 days. This rollout took about 50 days, which is just shy of two months. And then when you think about an infrastructure or you know a global brand like Hisense, to be able to say to the management, look, this solution is going to hit all of our needs, taxation, it's going to be integrated to SAP, uh, we're going to be fully secure, and fraud prevention is going to be there, and we're going to be done in two months. Executives would probably tell you no way. That is. That is not the case in Bigcom. It, it can absolutely happen, and this is proof that it did. So that's the solution for phase one. Just quickly, just generally what it looks like. So we're just matching the brand standards. Um, you know, you have your, your feature filtering right out of the box. You have your, uh, you know, the ability to do one-click buy, and then you can start to compare your models. Uh, then you got a product detail page where you have the ability to not only have, the, you know, the nuts and bolts of your product, but then you can also add in very styled, like highly styled, um, highly content-centric uh, 
content, which is something that you know you might not always find in a uh, in an e-commerce product. So you really do get the both best of both worlds. And now I'm a user. I've gone to Walmart in the store. I've researched high since I've browsed the site. I've looked at it. I'm ready to go make the purchase. Okay, here I go. I make the purchase. Technically speaking, let's look at the details of how this works. The integration for e-commerce has to deal with purchase orders, the fulfillment of those purchase orders, customers, and inventory. Those are the four building blocks. And you take those building blocks and you check and you break them down into three tiers. You get your web tier, which we're running big commerce, obviously. You've got your middleware tier, and that's where iMedia, uh, my company, and Seller Active come into play. And then you've got your data tier. SAP has been in that institution for a number of years. It's not going anywhere. No one gets fired for choosing SAP. That handles all their inventory, um, and it handles their order fulfillment through a logistics integration that they've already done and they've spent tons of money on. Uh, the logistics company is not really relevant here. It happens to be called Nissan. They're just a global supply chain uh, company. The way the data flows is purchase orders go from the web tier from BigCommerce. The purchase order gets created. Seller Active picks it up in real time. Uh, Seller Active has REST services that expose the data to, to my, my system. And my system has the capability to implement business logic. Business logic is something that uh, it translates the orders and it puts the right tagging on the orders so that SAP can consume them. SAP, in this case, already had uh, an ability to receive orders from a quote unquote third party. I was just another, my company is just another third party that, that, that's filing orders into SAP. And we have to adhere to their existing business rules. The reason that we ended up building a solution in this way is that SAP in the high sense infrastructure was a little bit inflexible. And anybody in the audience who deals with SAP might kind of, you know, understand that it is not necessarily the quickest uh, platform to build on. So if you have an existing framework or infrastructure that receives orders and you have an existing framework that can produce inventory files, um, these inventory files may be nuanced. The, uh, the business logic on how you, on you receive an order might be slightly different if you're a B2B play versus if you're a, uh, a commerce play, and it might be slightly different if you're an Amazon order or a Walmart order. So we had to kind of encapsulate the business logic in our own tier, and we also offered in some, you know, reporting and, and, and logging and, uh, and, and, and backup services there as well. So purchase orders come from the top down, inventory and ASNs, which are the, um, the process POs, go from SAP back up, and that's what enables big commerce to, uh, to trigger out emails when an ASN is received, that means a PO has been processed, and then the customer is going to get an email that kicks out the tracking number for that order. Okay. All right. So solution was well received. Um, as phase one of the process, it, we knew this was the first step. This is not the scale step, but we did see a 118% increase in monthly sales. There was zero fraud. Everything was great. Um, incidentally, it, it supported a very large uh, marketing offering, which Hyphens uh, established with The View. The View is a TV show, um, and it, it, it has a, a lot of eyeballs watch that TV show, and they did a giveaway. They gave away, I forget how many how many thousands of TVs, but they gave them away in about two days using a promo code. So we just used BigCommerce's promo code capability, and we cleared out those transactions in, in about two days, it, and the, the load was, was not an issue. Um, uh, so we also supported B2B, like we said, and that was phase one. Okay, so now the solution is set up so that Tyson's has some brand credibility. They're able to sell online. They've added to the bottom line and they've decreased some of the, some of the losses that they've seen in fraud. Uh, what we provided for them in this business logic tier is a database, reporting, logging, and asset retention. Uh, asset retention is important because when you have distributed selling and you have multiple people involved, uh, as, we, as we uncover what phase two was, where we're scaling out to Amazon, uh, Jet, Newegg, uh, Rectukin, Walmart, eBay, there are multiple different channels that are responsible for selling. Seller Active is the clearinghouse for all of it. iMedia is the backup for, in this case, Seller Active and SAP. If there is any loss of order on any channel, we're actually keeping track of that order and we can reproduce the order as needed. And it just so happened that Seller Active has had zero loss of any orders, as you might expect, neither did Amazon or Walmart or anything. But in SAP, it did happen. Some of the SAP clearinghouse or some of the SAP uh, kickback folks mistakenly deleted orders. So they needed to have it reset. So there's just like a little fail safe uh, mechanism here. You can do some reporting, you can refire orders in, and we expose our data through FTP, REST, or SOAP. In this case, 
SAP already had an infrastructure, they had a style, or a, uh, they had a markup style that we had to achieve. Um, so we're happy to provide the orders to any backend system. You could change out SAP, it could be Sage, it could be, it could be Oracle, it could be anything, it could be Navision. Um, we can pass out EDI, it can be FTP, it can be any, any markup that you need. That's the technical details of the solution. It takes you to phase two. Phase two, they wanted to scale. Now they've proven the solution works to management. Now they want to actually go ahead and put these products in front of the marketplaces that have a lot of traffic. So they wanted to scale out. They wanted to make sure that they were capturing buy boxes. They wanted to make sure that the pricing was adjustable and sophisticated so that they were protecting their margins. Um, and they wanted to be able to do this quickly. So they scaled out one at a time to Walmart, eBay, Amazon, Newegg, and Jet. And their, their mandate is over time to continue that expansion. So we're actively still working with them. We're adding on new partners. Um, Ratukin is next. Uh, that's going out about uh, in about uh, two weeks. Uh, and that was, the, that was, the, that was the, uh, the end goal, right? And if you look at the solution, it's almost identical, right? Big Commerce, the, the, the solution that we built was such that Big Commerce was the first, but we knew it was always going to be one of many. So the actual systems architecture doesn't change at all. It just means that on uh, your web tier, you have more than one player. Your middleware tier is exactly the same and your data tier is exactly the same and orders and data flow the exact same way. Seller Active in this case, with our middleware, is responsible for re-pushing the order to its originating um, channel so that the originating channel can kick back the, you know, the, the thank you email or the shipping update email when it happens. Um, and we can get into some of the details on, on, on the value that Seller Active adds here um, in some later slides, but the ability to price accurately across these channels, the ability to capture buy boxes is really kind of crucial in, in achieving success at these scales. And, uh, and I'd invite Ian from Seller Active to kind of go into some of those details now, because now we're looking at obviously one of the listing screens at Amazon for one of the Hisense TVs, which you can have for the low price of $8,999. I keep telling them when I'm when we make enough sales for them, I'm expecting one of these to be shipped to me at some point. So hopefully we can keep it going. Uh, thanks for all of that information, Brian. This is Ian from Seller Active again. Uh, as you guys can see, uh, what iMedia has been able to do for Hisense and what we're doing for other customers now is pretty much a turnkey solution is uh, take a really complex setup and simplify it for our users. And so as Brian said, you know, it can be SAP, it can be NetSuite, it can be Oracle. Essentially, you can have any sort of back-end solution in place and in conjunction with us, BigCommerce and iMedia controlling everything, we're able to put solutions into place to help you scale out. And so what Seller Active provides to our customers uh, are a few different things. Number one, we have a SaaS, a SaaS platform that is you know, up in the cloud uh, that integrates with all major sales channels. We have industry expertise that uh, has allowed us to create relationships with these different sales channels as well. And so, you know, starting out, you know, one of the goals was to scale. So when we started talking to Hisense, it was, okay, let's look at the marketplaces that you guys want to sell on and let's use our relationships that we have already put into place to help you get set up for success. And so as Brian mentioned, Hisense wasn't selling in the United States actively. However, they did have resellers of their products. Uh, Seller Active is a preferred partner of Amazon. And so what we have is for sellers like them, a new seller program. So essentially what we were able to do was in conjunction with Hisense, get an Amazon account executive that specializes in consumer electronics that helped us build out their account. So rather than them going there, having to deal with, you know, customer service overseas, uh, building out new ASINs, et cetera, we were able to list their products on all of the ASINs that already have the best sales ranks on Amazon. And then we were able to provide control of those ASINs to Hisense. So for anyone that is familiar with Amazon, an ASIN you know, is the identifier that categorizes their whole catalog. So this TV has an ASIN, an air purifier has an ASIN, et cetera. Uh, we were able to give Hisense control on all of those different ASINs and I'll touch upon that shortly. Uh, the Amazon partnership program was awesome. Uh, if you've tried to apply for Walmart, you may know that it can be a pretty tedious and timely process. 
uh, with Seller Active, if you come to us and you go through us, we can make that process extremely painless and expedite it for you. So rather than like a six to eight approval, pro six to eight week approval process, we're talking, you know, a week to 10 days. Uh, another one was with eBay. So rather than going to eBay and getting an account set up themselves, we have an enterprise account program that is on a approval basis. So if you wanted to go through us, what we can provide people, there's two different tiers. There's one for enterprise customers like Hisense. There's another one for smaller customers, um, but both have great benefits. I mean, just a couple things that are part of that on the enterprise plan, it's $40,000 plus of storefront fees waived for your first 14 months on eBay. Uh, you can waive up to 100,000 items uh, for listing fees, so you don't have to pay listing fees on your first 100,000 listings. Uh, eBay will provide our customers a free project manager to you know, make sure they get set up properly, make sure that they're set up with the proper tax software. Uh, we'll also, eBay will also provide our customers training on their global shipping program as well. So, you know, not only are we giving you the software and the listing tools uh, and the ability to list out to all these different channels, we're giving you a network of support throughout the e-commerce marketplace ecosystem that you're not going to be able to get otherwise. Uh, it really helps you get set up for success and it really makes sure that, you know, you're going to be set up properly and able to scale like Hisense was trying to do. Uh, going into some of this, as Brian mentioned, this is a listing that they have on Amazon directly. Um, and on, on to the next slide here. Some of the different things that we provide for Hisense, not only on Amazon, but across channels, uh, are some of these different technical details. So, for example, uh, one of the things that they really liked was the ability to monitor all their pricing from a consolidated location. So we have information for all of the ASINs that they have on Amazon. Uh, we're able to look at all of the resellers of their products. They can see if people are abiding by map policy and they can put business logic into place to a price at their map price at all times, or if they want to get more aggressive, they can price to capture buy boxes and then drive their price up once they're in the buy box. Um, it provides them a lot of visibility and rather than, you know, having to log in two different sales channels, they can simply monitor from our different dashboards that we have available. Uh, as you can see, some of the results that we've had are, you know, expansion to five online marketplaces so far. We have quite a few others that we're looking to help them get on. Uh, on Amazon in particular, 100% buy box retention. So all of the ASINs that Hisense is now on, they own. And they're able to monitor, say, if someone pops onto that, our pricing will quickly go back into place to ensure that their price is at a point where they're going to capture the buy box. Uh, they've seen a 1,000% increase in order sales uh, from e-commerce marketplaces. And the really exciting part is, I mean, you know, not only did it take 50 days to get the set up, but these results have, you know, come within the first nine months of actually being live. And so you know, we're looking forward to this next year and seeing what we can do with them. Uh, and in conjunction with our improvement in our technology, uh, we should have some pretty good results. Uh, one of the unique things about this setup is that, uh, you know, Hisense doesn't necessarily control inventory through our platform. Uh, Seller Active is serve or can serve as an inventory management solution for customers that aren't using, you know, say SAP or different things like that. Um, but what iMedia was able to do was uh, just have them use us to essentially control pricing and monitor across, you know, all their different channels. So as you can see, we have an inventory management page that is constantly getting updates from uh, Hisense's SAP solution. And we're essentially just pushing it out to all the different channels that we integrate with. Uh, you'll notice on the far right of the screen, we have the current rank for all of their products uh, that have competition for them on Amazon. So, you know, like number two here, we give them a notification that says, hey, you're the second lowest on the marketplace. Either A, someone's not abiding by your MAT policy, or you could set your price a little bit lower if you'd like to uh, go into that. Uh, their items that have buy boxes eligible, we have a gold star on, and you'll see that over on the right-hand side of the page. Um, essentially, what we're providing them is a centralized view to look at all their product offerings across all the different channels that they're on. 
you'll also see here. Ian, before you move on, if I could just jump in, there's, there's yep. one more nuance there that's really important for, uh, for any e-com player that's going to scale. Yep. When you talk about inventory, inventory as it comes in in this, in this what, what I'm going to call an enterprise place from SAP, which is the authority of inventory, that's going to represent the inventory at the time that SAP sends it. In our case, we do that once a day. Uh, we can increase that to any, any speed that you want. But you're always going to have a little bit of exposure as a retailer where you might have an order that's being processed in a, in a channel, and either maybe it's in that fraud detection state where it's not yet processed, but it still should count as an inventory decrement, or it could just be, wait, you know, we, as, as, we, as we found out, there were cases where Walmart uh, was actually holding onto an order and not actually clearing it through us, so it didn't result in the inventory being uh, decreased yet, in which case what would happen is if you get, say you have an order that's processing or, and, it, and it holds one SKU in, in, in pending state, well, we need to know that because when, when SAP fires over an inventory report and says, hey, I have five of these left, if I would set that inventory to five, that would make it so that that SKU um, that, that is pending would then be sold again because SAP didn't get it yet. And there you have your classic oversell. Now, if you oversell in a channel like Amazon or like Walmart, you get, you get penalized because you can't fulfill within the, the terms that you've agreed to with Amazon. So protecting against overselling is where, um, you know, is where Stellar Active Software and our middleware comes in because we have to be able to, to, to figure out, you know, What's, what's the real count in pending state? And it, and it does happen quite a bit. So just, just a little nuance on inventory there in an enterprise play that might catch some folks in the audience. Yep. Yeah, that's a great thing to add. And I mean, Seller Active updates to the different marketplaces. Uh, we've you know, solicited a lot of feedback and it is uh, extremely quick. So when we get a zero that hits our system, we're going to push that out uh, extremely quickly thereafter. And so we really mitigate the risk of overselling on all these different channels. Uh, layered on top of that, there is some functionality that people can utilize like quantity buffers, right? So say you have a popular item during the holiday season that you know you're going to be selling a lot of. I mean, maybe you're selling, you know, 500 a day. Uh, you can put a buffer in place in our system that says anytime this gets below 10, go ahead and remove it till we get more listy or more, uh, you know, replenishment back in. So we really do mitigate the risk of our selling through our platform and we have a lot of different tools that can help do that. You'll notice as I was speaking to, uh, we give Hisense visibility on all of the listings that they have within our system. So for example, this one right here, which is a dehumidifier, uh, will show you know, Hisense what their price is and what else, what everyone else is selling that product for as well. Uh, if something has the buy box that's not Hisense, we'll automatically, our prices will adjust accordingly to help them jump in and capture that. And so manufacturers love the current rank system that we have because it provides them full transparency and visibility across all of their channels uh, in respect to resellers of their products uh, to make sure that, you know, either they're staying competitive or that people are adhering by their map policy. Um, one of the things that we're seeing more and more of uh, is, you know, customers of ours like Hisense that are beginning to disrupt their distribution models rather than selling wholesale or just selling to resellers, they're going directly to consumers. And tools like this are really important to utilize uh, you know, in order to stay competitive. Uh, another thing that we provide for Hisense is a consolidated order management dashboard. And so we have all of their orders from all of the different channels pulled into our system. Uh, as Brian spoke to earlier, uh, iMedia's middleware will go in grab all of our order information, pass it over to SAP. When that tracking information is produced within the SAP solution, it comes back to our system and we'll update the respective marketplace accordingly. Um, our order management platform can be utilized as well to ship products out of if you would like. And we have some different things available like on Amazon, if you do FBA or fulfilled by Amazon, you know they're shipping product out to customers for you we can utilize that FBA inventory to fulfill other channels orders as well. So if you have an FBA strategy or you're doing a little bit out of FBA and you want to, you know, kind of decrease the amount you're shipping on other channels like eBay, wherever it is, essentially you can utilize seller active to automate those orders to fulfill out to other sales channels as well. Um, 
one of the many things that you can utilize with us and it's a consolidated dashboard that you can have all you know customer information in as well so if you need to come in you know a customer calls your customer service team you can come into our platform you know cancel that order uh, put out more orders different things like that manually create orders you can do it directly from this page as well That really wraps up the seller active side of things. You know, as I mentioned, I think the marketplace expertise, the relationships that we have set up with the different channels, the partner programs, uh, and then the you know ability to monitor all of your marketplaces from a centralized place, uh, you know, is really a slam dunk for anyone that's looking for a you know effective and efficient solution for all the different channels that they're on. Um, in conjunction with, you know, Big Commerce, who is one of our preferred shopping cart partners, and iMedia, uh, really the opportunities are endless for all the different channels that you want to sell on. I, Brian had mentioned it uh, briefly, but I mean, iMedia is incredibly flexible when it comes to customized development. So they can really do anything for uh, any type of customer, as you saw from the people they work with. Um, we do have some questions. Let's see here, question for me. Dirk, Dirk asks, uh, where are Hisense listings originally created, product details, et cetera? Uh, thanks, Dirk. So the product uh, listings are actually created within Seller Active for the different channels. Brian or Jason, maybe you guys can speak to even a step before that how you guys went about and the process you went through to create those listings on the actual big commerce site. Okay. So on the big commerce side, uh, we just did a, uh, an, an import of the data from, from SAP to handle just the actual SKUs and the, uh, just, just the SKU numbers and the pricing. Um, but SAP, uh, does not store any, as you might expect, it doesn't store anything, any like robust, like imagery or anything like that, even like sophisticated product descriptions. Um, they also do not have a PIM, so uh, we actually just got that data. We collected that data as part of our process to stand up the e-com store and implemented it on uh, on Big Commerce. And then from there, <clears throat> from there, it was uh, it was distributed over to Seller Active and sucked in. So so we actually had the uh, we actually had to alter that content, imagery, copy, uh, video, etc. on Big Commerce directly. Cool. And then of course, once we got that information in from their system, uh, we were able to create that listing and uh, duplicate it out on other channels. One of the unique things is with our partner programs, however, we're able to work with, you know, like Amazon or Walmart to make sure that we get it set up and categorize on the proper listings that have the most popular sales ranks there. Do we have any other questions at this point from people in the audience? Uh, let's see. Here's, here's another one. Uh, yep. The question is, um, uh, it was for big commerce. Why did Hisense move forward with big commerce? I, I, I can jump in and answer that one and then I can pass it over to, to big commerce. I was, um, I was heavily involved in that process and, and I'm, I, I kind of steered them towards big commerce. Um, what, what, I, what eventually clinched the decision was the feature list that they built, the requirement list that they built, uh, was almost a direct fit for what big commerce had out of the box as far as fraud detection, B2C and B2B sales, um, customized pricing, ease of use, quick go to market, taxation and shipping. Everything was a direct match. Um, so, you know, those are the, those are the kind of the key building blocks in how you, in how you choose like a platform. Um, also, they knew that they were going to be doing extensive promoing throughout the year and coming years. And they wanted a SaaS solution that was going to be bulletproof. Um, that, that really is where big commerce shines. Um, you know, the uptime guarantees the speed it, it stood up to a, it stood up to a shark tank traffic. If, if you'll take that analogy, um, <laughs> there was a retailer who was on shark tank, got the deal on shark tank and they happened to have been on big commerce at the time. And the amount of traffic was obscene and big commerce didn't even blip. So when your feature sets match and the solution is SaaS and you can go to market in, in 50 days, it, the solution was kind of right in front of us. And I don't yeah, know if just to, to add to that, Jason. 
Yeah, just to emphasize, I, I think it, it, the quick deployment time uh, going to market in uh, the time frame that was originally laid out by Hisense, uh, our platform really allows you to uh, get up and running very quickly, even with uh, all of the additional uh, integrations that, that, that were uh, deployed at the same time. So uh, the, the quick time to market, I, I think, was probably one of the, the key features and selling points uh, that led Hisense to make the decision. Great. And uh, there was just one more question um, uh, to, the, to the panelists about just a clarification on who handled the actual development of the solution. Be and, and that's a good question because it, it does get a little confusing when it's SaaS. Um, SaaS, for anybody that doesn't know, it's software as a service. And that means that the, that the software exists in the cloud. Um, so what you do is you end up you end up buying the software, but you pay uh, far less than you would in, in, let's say, if you were to buy Hybris or Demandware. Um, both of those were acquired by even bigger uh, entities. But in sort of like in the old days of commerce, you would have an on-prem installation where you'd buy the software and then you'd pay maintenance on that software. And you know your exposure in that software cost would be in the hundreds of thousands of dollars um, as a one-time cost. SaaS is a different model. SaaS is offering software in the cloud for a, a monthly fee fractional monthly fee. And what that does is it allows you to get access to any features. And features are rolled out all the time. And you get you get exposed to those features as you log into the, to the software, you log in on your browser, and then you can see, oh, hey, look, there's a, there's the Apple Pay was introduced. You can now use Apple Pay, just hit a button, great. Um, that's the SaaS part of things. And that's what big commerce handles. The, the implementation of the front end of it, the skinning, the HTML markup, um, you know, the creating of the of, of the flows to do the to do the purchasing. Um, that's what we did at iMedia. We are a full service digital agency. We did the design and the development. You can basically call it front end and back end. Um, you know, whereas the SaaS provider handles the functionality of e-commerce, we handle the look and feel and all the data transfer to the different pieces of the enterprise. Um, and as our, you know, as our as our kind of model indicates as, as an agency, we choose the best fit platforms for an enterprise scenario. In this case, Bigcom was clearly the winner for e-commerce. Seller Active was clearly the winner for channel distribution. And well, we didn't have a choice in SAP because when you, when, you, when you choose SAP, you end up sticking with it for a long time. Okay, so we got some more questions. Yeah, I saw one uh, about uh, Seller Active in particular. I think it said, what other marketplaces does Seller Active integrate with? Uh, and our list of marketplaces right now uh, consists, in, I'll try to list them all off the top of my head. We have marketplace integrations and we have par partner integrations. Uh, for marketplace integrations, it's, you know, Amazon, eBay, uh, all the European Amazons, uh, Amazon, Spain, UK, France, Germany, uh, Mexico, Canada. Shortly here, we'll be adding Australia and Japan as well. Um, you know, eBay, Walmart, Jet, Rakuten, Newegg, Newegg Business, Newegg Canada. Um, and then, of course, we have partner integrations as well. So, you know, Big Commerce, some other shopping carts, uh, what, SKU Vault, different ones like that, QuickBooks, etc. cetera. Um, but the really cool thing in conjunction with iMedia is we are really uh, limitless in terms of where we can integrate with. Uh, I mean, what I've seen with Brian's team and with their company is that they can really build any sort of integration we would need if we don't offer it out of the box. That's not to say that we aren't consistently building out more integrations for our customers, but um, you know, anything that has an API or EDI integration, so Costco, Best Buy, wherever it is, uh, iMedia can build an integration for that. So uh, what we have out of the box is not what we are limited to. All right, we had another question um, on what, what fees does Signified charge? Um, I loosely recall the fees, but I don't recall enough to give any clarity on it. Um, I believe it's a percent of the transaction and it's a, and it's a fraction of a percent, but um, Jason, do you, do you happen to have that information off the top of your head? I do not. I was actually trying to look it up here. Uh, so if you give me another minute or two, I might be able to dig something up. Um, but off the top of my head, I do not know. I, I believe you are correct, but uh, if there's any other questions, let's move on and, and maybe we can come back to this. If not, I can definitely follow up uh, with the uh, ask 
the person who asked the question after the uh, call. Okay, thank you. Cool. I, I think that taps out questions at this point. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we will have this recorded for you guys, and I think it would make sense for us to put you know, contact information for uh, all three companies in our follow-up correspondence. And so definitely be on the lookout for that. We'll do a good job of getting this edited for you guys and uh, pushing it out to everyone, emailing it out. Uh, you know, if you need to get on a call with any of us, certainly let us know. Uh, Brian, Jason, is there anything you guys want to add at this point? Uh, not, not from my end. Just want to thank everybody for their time, and uh, and we'll we'll be in touch, following up with uh, you know, with that uh, with the recording. Sounds good. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. Appreciate your time and attention. And uh, please reach out with any additional questions. And regarding Signified, I will uh, get back uh, to, to that uh, question and follow up uh, offline. Perfect. Well, thank you everyone for coming today. Uh, we really enjoyed putting this together for you all. Be on the lookout for more webinars on the way shortly. Uh, feel free to shoot us any questions and be on the lookout for recording. Happy selling in the meantime.